let's go ahead and talk about the the problem that you've uh, presented to me and it is 4x squared or x to the second power if you want to say that it's easier to say squared 4x squared minus 3x and what is it plus 3 first thing that catches my eye we have a coefficient and a negative number this leads me to assume that you've already done simpler trinomials this is a trinomial because we have three separate numbers none of these numbers can be combined because one has a squared x, one has a single x, one has no x. These numbers cannot be added together or subtracted. A simpler one would be x squared plus 6x plus 9. This is simpler because we're not dealing with a coefficient. And we have a positive number. You always group these into three separate numbers. You, you include whether it's adding or subtracting. So this is a positive 4x squared because there's no negative in front of it. <clears throat> there's no negative in front of it, excuse me. This is a negative 3 because there's a minus in front of it. This is a positive 3 because there's a plus in front of it. So here we have all positive numbers and no coefficient. Before I proceed, I do have to go through a, a few fundamentals. You may know these things. Some of them are going to be like dead simple, but I do. I got to include them just to lead to where I'm going. So if you know all this stuff, you can kind of skip through it. Obviously, you know how to add. So 2 plus 3 equals 5. Now if we bring in a negative number, for example, negative 2 plus 3, now we are dealing with a number that's less than 0. And when you're adding numbers less than 0, you're going to be going higher. So if you take negative 2 plus 3, you get negative 1, 0, and then 1. That's adding 3. If we, if we, I'm sure you've seen number lines when you're doing uh, inequalities. Uh, one, two, one, two, and these are negative. So everything left of the zero is negative and smaller. Everything to the right is positive. Uh, they're larger numbers. We started with negative two, and we added three. One, two, three equals one. But wouldn't there be a much easier way to express that? And there would be, because we have a positive three. With, the, with the adding and subtracting, you can put these in any order you want. So if we group these two numbers and just switch them, we're left with a positive 3, we don't need to put a plus there, and a negative 2. And we said this equals 1, and how about that? 3 minus 2 equals 1. So that's adding and subtracting negative numbers. I, I, I have a lot of confidence that you already knew that. And let's go, quickly go over uh, multiplying positive and negative numbers. If we were to take, let's do 5 and 4. 5 times 4 equals 20. And if we throw a negative in there, negative 5 times 4 still equals 20, but now it's negative 20. If we had another negative, negative 5 times negative 4, we now have a positive 20. So, a negative number times a positive number, these are, these are variables of course, they can equal anything, will always equal a negative number. A negative number times a negative number will equal a positive number. So that's uh, pretty simple. Um, you should definitely know that already. Uh, so one more example would be uh, negative 7 times positive 3, that would be 7 times 3 is 21, and one of these numbers are negative, so you keep it negative. Let's go ahead and talk about variables real quick. Remember, variable can equal absolutely anything. It varies. That's why it's variable. So if we have 2x, what does that mean? It's a simpler way of saying 2 times x. So if we wanted the x to be 4, then 2x would equal 8. If we wanted the x to be 8, it would be 2, uh, 2x would equal 16. So x equals 4 here, and x equals 8 here. And those are just, you can again, you can choose any number you want to put in that x, and it's going to affect the outcome as long as you're properly, as long as you're multiplying it. Now this works the same with uh, positive and negative numbers. If we took uh, negative 2x, 
and we want to multiply it with a negative 4x, we would end up with, and uh, I kind of skipped a step here, but we would end up with negative 8x squared. Uh, I kind of jumped the ship on one thing here because we took negative 2 and we multiplied it with negative 4. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have a negative 8, do we? We have a positive 8. See, I just made the mistake. And uh, that's that's a common mistake, so you definitely need to keep your eye out for that. So negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8. And then x times x is x squared. For example, um, if, uh, if we had 2 squared, that would be 4. If we had 3 squared, that would be 9 because that equals 2 times 2, and 3 times 3, so 4 squared would be 16. If you had 4 times 4 times 4, that would be 4 to the third power. Uh, we're not getting into that. You may have to factor some polynomials that have uh, the higher than the power of 2. doesn't look like you've got there yet. If you need me to explain that, we will definitely get to it uh, another time. Now if we were to, let's go ahead and do adding variables real quick. So if we had a, uh, let's start with positive numbers. If we had a positive 5x and a positive 20x, we have a positive 25x. Notice we don't have an x squared this time. That's because these what, what they, these can be combined. We, these entire groups, we just combine them and keep their common denominator, common factor, I should say, um, which is the x, because they're being multiplied here. In simple terms, if you ever have a number with a variable plus another number with the same variable, you just add the two numbers and keep the variable. If we had 5x plus um, 16x squared, we have no idea. We can't combine this. This completely throws us off here, and there's no way to make it a simpler form. So these are two entirely, sorry about that, these are in two entirely separate numbers. That we, we have no idea what it equals until we decide x equals something. And uh, so if we had uh, the other way around, let's go, instead of x plus x squared, let's do 2x plus 3. No x. Same exact situation, since there's no x over here, we can't combine these. Now we can do, we can multiply them. You can pretty much multiply anything, even with variables, and get something. So, just multiply these numbers here, 2 times 3 is 6, and x has nothing to be multiplied with. So that doesn't mean 0, so it doesn't mean x times 0, it just means that the x has nothing to do. So it's 6x. Had it been 3x, then it would be 6x squared. So you can multiply any numbers, you just can't add any numbers that have variables unless they have the exact same variable. And then uh, let's go ahead and talk about the no negative numbers again. If we had negative 12x and we multiplied it with a negative 4, uh, just negative 4, that would be a positive 48. We only have 1x. If that were negative 12x times negative 4x, it would be positive 48x squared. The last thing we'll talk about before we get to your problem, factoring. <clears throat> factoring is very simple. All factors are, are numbers that can be multiplied with other numbers to equal your source number. Simple terms, let's factor the number 12. That would be our source number. If, uh, if you were told to factor 12, what are all the different ways we can equal 12? Um, what, what whole numbers can we multiply to equal 12? Um, you always want to start off with the largest number, <clears throat> which is 12. 12 goes into itself one time. 12 times 1 is 12. Now we can't use 11, because there's no way for 11 to go into 12 evenly, because we'll have a remainder of 1. We can't do it with 10, we can't do it with 9, 8, 7. We'd have to go all the way down to 6. Because we multiply 6 by 2, because you put if you put 6 into 12, you have a remainder of 6. So you can just put 6 in again. So 6 times 2. Um, and then the next number lower than 6 would be 4. And we just multiply that with 3. 
We can go lower than 4, because that would be 3, but then we would just be going backwards. Uh, this would be, I'm sorry, 2 times 6, and then 1 times 12. So these are irrelevant because we're just being redundant. So there you go. There's all of your factors. Um, sometimes it's not so easy. Like if we wanted all the factors of 322, that's going to take a lot of work. You're not going to be given problems like this. But if you wanted to, you can just say 322 times 1. And then if you want to figure out what times 2, it's going to be half of that, which is, oh god, what is that? Uh, 151, I think? 161. 161 times 2, and then you can just go from there until you get every single number. Um, some other factors of 12, you can still use, you can basically cross use any of these numbers here and get 12. Let's just use 3 and 2. Well, 3 times 2 times 2, 3 times 2 is uh, 6, 6 times 2 is 12. So you can see these are factors. They, you can play with all these numbers and multiply them in different ways to equal 12. And now we can go to your, oh, I'm so sorry. We gotta talk about one more thing. Factoring a number with a variable. <clears throat> if we had 12x, all we can really do as far as factoring is the same thing that we had before. Six times two, three times four, or it was four times three, but same difference. And then x. I guess x, uh, it's basically just x times 12, basically. <clears throat> um, these technically aren't factors because these would all equal 12 by itself. So technically it's going to be um, you know, 12x, 6x, 3x, or 1x, 2x, and 4x. But definitely not an x on both sides or else we'd have an x squared. So if we wanted to factor 16x squared, we would have... Well, let's do the factors of 16. 16 times 1, 8 times 2, 4 times 4, and then we start to go backwards again. So now we need to get an x squared. If I only put x's on, some, on one of these numbers, uh, pairs, we would only get 16x. So the factors would actually be that. Those are all the factors. 16x times 1x, remember, x times x, 16 times 1, 16x squared. Okay, those things you definitely, definitely have to know. Um, if you want me to elaborate on all that, I can make you a separate video. But you definitely have to know those things before we can solve your problem. Um, <clears throat> oops, let's go ahead and keep that. Let's solve the simpler problem first. And that is x squared plus 6x plus 9. How can we factor this? Well, we were taking from 12 and 16, we were taking these numbers that we can multiply together to equal this whole number. How can we do that with a trinomial? Well, there's a, a very logical way, and it's a very simple process. The first thing we'll do is factor, oh, I'm sorry, it's not plus 9x. It's going to be uh, plus 9, because if it were 9x, we can combine those to 15x, and that wouldn't be a trinomial. So here we are. We're going to take factors of 9 first, and that's a very simple one, because it's only 9 times 1 and 3 times 3. There are no other numbers that, that are factors of 9 except for these. So now we have the factors, and they're in pairs. Which of these pairs equals the center um, number? And of course it's the 3 times 3. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. But if we were to add those two, it would be 6. So that's the pair we are going to work with. Now we can break down, or we have to break down this 6x. It needs to be 3x plus 3x. That's, where I, that's what I did with these two 3s. And if you add those, you get 6x. Now, our equation is still the same. It's just not simplified anymore. We're now using factors of 9 that add up to equal 6. Once you've gotten to this point, you're going to group them. Um, you can just draw some parentheses around each. And now these are their own separate little equations. And whenever parentheses are butted up against each other, um, that means to 
it would mean to multiply, but we're not actually doing that here. We're just creating groups. So, create the groups. Oops. And 3x plus 9. So now to factor, we have to take something out of each group that both numbers have in common. In this case, both of these numbers have an x. Remember, we couldn't add these, uh, but we could multiply them, right? When you're factoring, you want to think about multiplication. This group is being added, just find two, just find one common thing between these two, and of course it's the x. Because there's no 3, there's nothing here that's common with the 3. So if we take the x out, just we, we only take one x out, what does that leave us with? Well this x squared just becomes x. And the 3x just becomes 3. And if you were to put this back in standard form, you just multiply it out. x times x, x squared x times 3, 3x. <clears throat> so now there's our group that we've, fa we've factored. This can't get any simpler now because it's at the most, we took that x out, it's the most basic way we can represent it. Let's do the same over here, but this time it's going to be a little different. Both of these numbers don't have an x, so we can't take that out of there. What we can do, because, that, because 3 is a factor of 9, you can take that 3 out and you're left with x plus 3. Look at that, we're back at our factors. Because if we were to multiply this out, 3x and uh, 9. Alright, I've kind of run out of some room here. Um, I can work with it. So let's go ahead and put our groups... Oh, give me a second, I gotta catch up with myself on what we do from here. Um, this is actually this is your answer. This is this is factored, and then uh, we, you just have to add. We're adding these two groups. So now, if we were to spell it back out, let's go ahead and do that. X times X is X here. Let's just go right up here. Is X squared? X times three is three X, and then we're adding. So let's keep that that plus back. Three times X is three X and that equals 6x. And then 3 times 3 equals 9. We've gone forward and backward with our trinomial. So now it's time for the big boy. The problem uh, that you need to solve that has a negative number and it has a coefficient. The coefficient is just a fancy term for this big number in front of uh, actually, this is considered a coefficient as well, and this is a constant, because it doesn't change, doesn't have a variable. Now, we're kind of going to do, oh, I'm sorry, I have this written wrong. It's minus 13x. You're probably saying that to yourself right now. It's a good thing I didn't start solving that. Actually, I technically um, couldn't have solved that, because that would have been in simplest form already. Um, so, let me rewrite this. <clears throat> we have 4x squared minus 13x plus 3. If we, we're going to first group these numbers alone. And remember to always take the sign in front of it. This is a minus sign, so that makes this a negative 13x. That's a plus sign, so that makes it a positive 3. So, step 1. Um, if you want, you should write this down in steps. Step 1 is to group each of the numbers and group them with the sign in front of them. This is automatically positive because there's nothing in front of it. If there, there could have been a negative, but there isn't, so we're, we're calling it positive. Now we need to find, instead of finding factors of 3 like we did on our other where we were finding factors of 9, we have to multiply first the coefficient with the 3, and that's going to give us 12. We're not looking at the x's, we're not looking at anything, we're just looking at the coefficient and the constant, these big numbers. Now we're going to factor 12. So 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 3 times 4. Or 4 times 3, I keep mixing that up. So now we need to figure out <clears throat> which of these, when added, just like the other one, we had 3 times 3 equals 9, and when in the middle we had 6x, or we had 6. 
So the threes when they're added equals the six. In this case, we can't really do that because 12 and one is a positive 13. And this is a negative 13. So we can kind of, um, we can fudge these numbers a little bit and still have it equal 12. For example, negative 12, we can add a negative to actually all of these. These are factors we could have done before, but we weren't really worrying about it because we weren't looking. Let me turn these into x's so they look. Let me do all this over again. <clears throat> 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 4 times 3. So what I was saying is we can add a negative to those, but now we're just going to get over here negative 12. And we're not trying to get negative 12, we're trying to get a positive 12. So whenever you have this negative number here, and you have a positive over here, after you've multiplied these and you're trying to factor it, you're basically going to have a negative on everything. Because all of these negatives, all of these negatives times all of these negatives are going to equal positive numbers. So negative 12 times negative 1 equals positive 12. All of these do. All of these equal positive 12. Now, which of these can we add? As, you know what, this is probably why math books don't use x for multiplying, because it looks like the variable x. So, um, disregard that. That's just, those are our factors. <clears throat> Which of these pairs can we add together and get a negative 13? And the answer is simple. It's negative 12 and negative 1. When those combined, and you're on the number line, and you're, you know, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, all the way to negative 12, and remember, you can ref you don't you can say negative 12 plus negative 1 because we are combining them. But remember, I told you earlier the simpler way of saying that is without the plus. So it's basically negative 12 minus 1. Remember, negative 12, negative 1. That's where we got it from. We're combining those. Negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13. The number we're trying to get. <clears throat> I'm going to do all of these steps one more time, a little bit more quickly, just to do a rundown. This was your equation. We can't factor this three yet because we have a coefficient. Four times three is 12. We drew out, or we wrote out all the factors, and we had to figure out which two, when added, will equal the center number. To get a negative 13, we had to play with the factors. So we added negative 12 and negative 1. Because when those are added, we get negative 13. So those are our, that's our key pair right now. So where do we go from here? We're going to rewrite the equation, and it is 4x squared minus, look at those two, minus 12x, because we have that x to work with, minus 1x. And then we just do plus 3. This still equals what that equals, but we just broke it down a little bit. <clears throat> so now we're going to do our grouping. Group. Always take the signs. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start on a blank sheet here. So we had, <clears throat> after we grouped them, well, first we had, um, sorry. We had 4x squared minus 13x uh, minus 3, or plus 3. And then once we did all the factoring, it was 4x squared minus 12x minus 1x plus 3. And then we grouped them. After grouping them, separate them out just so you can have something to work with. 4x squared minus 12x and uh, negative 1x. Actually, you don't even have to say negative 1x. You can just say negative x or minus x because negative 12x minus x still equals negative 13x. So we'll just say negative x plus 3. So now we have to start taking out factors. We have a 4 and a 12 to play with. When we factored out 12, we had 12 times 1, uh, 6 times 2, and 4 times 3. 
Well, we can't use, you have to figure out what their greatest common factor. What that means is the largest numbers when multiplied equal 12. Well, 6 times 2 equals, tw oh, I'm sorry, that, that are in common. The 6 isn't in common with the 4. So the largest numbers that we can multiply that have a common factor, because, okay, let me do this, I'm sorry. Let's factor 4. That would be 4 times 1, 2 times 2, and uh, that's it. <clears throat> so now, we can't do 2 times 2 because there's no factors like that over here. We have, we have to choose the greatest factor. And here, that they have in common are the 4s. Um, quick example, if we had to do uh, <clears throat> greatest common factor between 8 and 6, uh, let's do 32. So 8, 8 times 1, uh, 4 times 2, okay, and then 32 is going to be 32 times 1, 16 times 2, and then 8 times 4. So the greatest common factors, it's not 16 times 2, because 16 is not a factor of 8. 8 is a factor of 8. 8 is also a factor of 32. So those are the greatest common factors, is 8. Or that is the greatest common factor, is 8. So let's go back. So we had a 4, we had a 12, we factored them out. And now we had the greatest common factor, which was 4. That was the biggest number that they both had in common. We're going to take that number out of here. When we take the 4 out, we have to take it out of both of these numbers. Um, and before I do that, there's something else that we can take out that these have in common. They both have an x. So we're going to take 1x out too. We can't take an x squared. You wouldn't take two x's out. Well, if you take two x's out, those two x's are being multiplied, so that basically equals x squared. We can't take an x squared out because that would leave, there's only one x over here, so we can't take two x's out of one. So we're only going to take one x. We can take one x out of here to give us negative 12. And when we take one x out over here, we're left with x. Remember that four was taken out already. So here we are, four and then anything next to parentheses is being multiplied 4 times x minus 12. If we put it back in standard form, 4 times, uh, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> we took that x out, remember? We got to put it out there. 4x times x minus 12. If we did 4x times x, we'd get 4x squared. And then if we did, uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Ugh. Let's start over. The greatest common factor was 4. When we take the 4 out, this 4 is gone, and then we take it, we're taking the 4 out of the 12 as well, and that left us with negative 3. And I'm just saying negative because we have a minus sign that carried all the way down, because 4 times 3 is 12. And then we took out an x, so we had 4x. That left us with x here, and no x there, because that x was taken out. 4x times x minus 3. Now let's do the same thing over here. Well, we can't. There's nothing we can take out over here because um, there's nothing in common. There's no x over here with the 3. There's no, this is a 1, a negative 1x, and there's just nothing we can do. So, and uh, we're doing plus because we need to add these two together. Because remember, originally we had um, a negative 12x minus um, 1x. We could say minus here, but that's not going to work with factoring. And remember my other example of um, negative 12x plus negative x? We're using that. So we turn negative 12x plus x. This is that plus sign. That plus sign carried down from this negative 12x and this negative 1x. You don't have to remember that. Just remember that you're always going to be adding the two groups. But if there was a minus sign, that needs, you know, we have to do all the negative numbers properly. Okay, so we didn't take anything out over here. Now we have, let's rearrange these to make it look a little prettier. You can leave it like this. I don't know how your teacher wants you to do it. But remember, numbers that are being added can be rearranged. So let's just do 3 um, 
sorry, 3 minus x. Oh, you know what? 3 minus x. Okay. Let's just leave it like that for now. Now, if we want to check our work, <clears throat> let's go ahead and um, put it back in standard form. 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. Now remember there's a 1 here. There's a 1 in front of technically everything and you're always multiplying it. There's a 1 in front of this 4 because 1, one times 4 equals 4. Uh, that's not a good way to think about it but if you ever have this is all representing one number once it's all you know once that 3 is actually x is actually subtracted from 3 but we don't know what x is. So to multiply this out, we would do 1 times 3. This is a positive 1. So plus 1 times 3 is 3. And a positive 1 um, times a negative x. Shit. Sorry, I screwed up. Okay. Okay, I got it. Remember I switched these two? This ended up happening. So let's not switch those two. I'm going to do all of this one more time very quickly. In fact, I'm going to tell you to go to this part if you already know everything that I've just talked about. <clears throat> Your problem was 4x squared minus 13x plus 3. Multiply these, we get 12. Factor it out, 12 times 1. Um, that's step 1. Step 2 is to factor it out, 6 times 2, and then 4 times 3. Now we need to figure out um, which of these added equals negative 13. 12 plus 1 equals positive 13, so let's just tack on two negatives. I'm just doing two of these so you can see that. Negative 12 times negative 1 is still positive 12 but when they're added we get a negative 13. So let's rewrite it with its split up that way. 4x squared minus 12 and we still have an x from the 13x minus 1 because we have negative 12 negative 1 x plus 3. We don't use 1x so we're just gonna call it x <clears throat> plus 3. Group them. Make sure they have their signs. Now we have, uh, we got to figure out what's common here. And if we factor out 4 and 12, we get 4 times 1 and 2 times 2. We get 12 times 1, 6 times 2, and uh, 4 times 3. Greatest common number, greatest common factor, because these are all factors, the greatest one that they both have in common is 4. So we're going to take the 4 out. And what else do they have in common? The x can't take x squared out because this is only 1x, but we can take 1x from here. So we'll take that x out. That x is now by itself. The 4 is gone, one of the x's are gone, and then when we take a 4 out of the 12, and we're talking about this is being this is all being multiplied. We take a 4 out of 12, that gets gives us 3. And it's a negative 12, so we have a negative 3, and no x because we don't we took that x out. And then this one, we don't have to do anything because there's nothing, um, there's nothing in common. This is your answer. And to check it, we'll um, factor it all out. 4x times, or the opposite of factoring. 4x times x, 4x squared. 4x times negative 3 is negative 12x. Um, we, at this point, we can just leave that negative x plus three. I was sitting there. You can multiply the one out, but when they're when it's like that, you don't have to do anything. So here we are. We're left with this, and if we combine these two, it's negative thirteen x. So four x squared minus thirteen x plus three. Oh boy. Hope that hope that helped. These are these are hard to explain, <laughs> and uh, this took me a little while. So I'll tell you to jump to this part if you want the quick answer, um, but I really do encourage you to watch the beginning if you need to remember all of that. If you have another problem exactly like this, please try it on your own. 
If not, I will do one more video where I will slowly explain that one problem without anything else. We'll just break it down by the steps. Okay, good luck. Let me know how that works out for you. Thanks for watching.